Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX. Thanks for joining me today. So ever since I was first licensed in about 2008, I've used a big, heavy, blue Alinco linear power supply producing 30 amps at about 13.8 volts. And it's never set a foot wrong for me. It's always worked as intended. But I was thinking that if it ever did fail, I didn't have a backup. I had no plan B for my shack. And while I had this thought in the back of my head and looking through the various amateur radio dealers at what power supplies they had to offer, and they're not cheap, are they? You know, you're looking at sort of anywhere between 90 to 100 pounds for sort of a new switch mode 30 amp supply. You're looking at more if you want it to be linear. You're looking at even more if you want more current. I was at work going through our e-waste and I found two old servers that we aren't ever going to use again. And the power supplies caught my eye because they were rated at 12 volts, 62 and a half amps. And I thought, I wonder, I wonder if I could make this work for ham radio use. So got online, did a bit of Googling and found that, yeah, it's quite easy actually to make a server power supply produce power on the pins because ultimately if you plugged this in without it being in a server, it wouldn't switch on. The only problem was is that they are a true 12 volts. And whilst some amateur radio gear will run natively on 12 volts, things like mobile radios or maybe chargers for HDs, things that are not gonna draw a lot of current, they will work absolutely fine on 12 volts. But I tried my IC7300 and that didn't like it at all. Yes, it would turn on. Yes, it would start producing RF. But as soon as I started to wind the power up, it would top out at about 75 watts rather than the 100 watts it's supposed to produce. And from experience, I know that's because ICOM radios in particular are very fussy about any voltage drop. So for instance, if you have particularly dirty fuses or contacts on your fuses, you'll find that your ICOM radio will start to back off the power because it thinks it can't pull the current. So that's exactly what I was experiencing with the, this particular power supply running just 12 volts. So did some more digging on the internet to see if you could modify a server power supply for ham radio use at 13.8 volts, which is obviously the voltage that most amateur radio gear wants to see. Well, you can, it's relatively easy. So let's hop over to the bench and I'll show you how to do this. So here we have the server power supply and the particular one I have is the HB HSTNS hyphen PL18. If you buy one of these online, you're either gonna get a PL18 or perhaps a PD18. Now, if you have the choice, go for the PL18 as it's a simpler modification. The PD18 is still, you can still modify it. However, with the PD18, you have to add in a resistor uh, between the pot and ground. That's a bit tricky to get in um, and then adjust it. To be honest, it's not particularly hard, just that little bit easier if you've got a fine tip your soldering iron to modify the PL18. So first things first is let's grab a screwdriver and just undo all of the screws on the case. I think there's about eight uh, screws or so, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws actually. Uh, so I'm just gonna undo all of these. Okay, so with all of the screws removed, you can kind of open up the whole thing like a book. Uh, it just sort of pivots. Uh, and then there's uh, sort of a little mechanism you pull, sort of pull the lid towards you and then the whole lid comes off and I'm gonna pop that off to one side. Now it's up here on this top board where we're really interested underneath this sort of piece of insulating plastic. Um, we are interested in the main uh, voltage adjustment pot, uh, which is uh, this pot just here. Uh, I shall lift that up just to try and get you a better view of that. So it's this pot right here. And then to the left of it, there's two resistors and we are going to be removing that top resistor and putting a uh, bridge in its place. Um, online, sort of people say about putting a, uh, a small link in there. Uh, I am just going to try and just use a solder bridge uh, just to, to bridge that across and that should be absolutely fine. So uh, let's do that first. 
Um, I'm probably going to go a bit quiet while I'm trying to do this because I'm going to try and concentrate. But also, uh, I'm working on that. And the tip on my soldering iron is probably not as fine as I would like. I'm also using solder that's probably just a little bit too thick as well. Uh, so let's have a go. I'm coming through there. A tiny spot, spot of solder. I've got my tweezers. There we go. So that's it. Um, that's it off. What well, I'm just going to check. I can see there's a little pad just to the right of the uh, the top pad from where this, um, the resistor came out of. What I want to double check is whether that is currently, before I uh, start, whether that is currently shorted to that top pad. I think it might be, but I want to double check. So basically what I want to make sure is if I do happen to um, accidentally solder onto it whether it already is bridged and it already is right now i'm going to uh, grab my solder iron and my solder once again uh, and i'm just going to um a clean my tip nice and oh, apologies wrapped the uh, camera and i'm going to Right, it's not pretty, but it is done. I did go onto that solder pad just on to the right. But as I said, I knew that was already shorted, so I'm not concerned about that. But I have soldered across there. As I say, it is really not very pretty, but I've managed to do it without uh, creating a solder bridge onto anything else. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to make the power supply turn on when we plug it in, because at the moment it won't. Um, this is achieved by bridging uh, two of the pins on this connector down here. So we want to bridge this one and that one. So that one's marked 33, so we want, so it's 33, 34, 35, and 36 we're gonna bridge together. Um, ordinarily, if this was installed in a server, um, that would happen when you plug the power supply into the server would then generate volts on these two large pads here. Obviously we're not installing it in the server so we need to do that uh, manually. So I am going to use a tiny little bit of wire, it doesn't have to be all that long, it's only going from there to there. Um, and obviously just uh, some solder. So I'm just going to tin those uh, pads. Uh, these do tend to solder quite easily. Look at that, and that one as well. Very nice, nice bit of solar smoke just rising up to the camera. Right, and I'm not even going to bother to tin the uh, the wire to be honest. It will just go. Okay, I should have tinned the wire. Let me just tin the wire. <laughs> well, it's not like any other rain on the roof as well. It's um, obviously pelting it down today. Uh, there we go. And there we go. Right wire tinned let's just try that again there's one and there's two lovely so that is that done the next thing uh, is to turn the power supply on and uh, adjust the voltage by measuring the voltage output here um, this is the scary bit, if I'm honest, because it means you have to turn the power supply on whilst it's all exposed. So, obviously, caution, pursue caution, don't go putting anything metal anywhere near it while you're doing it, uh, apart from the screwdriver you're using to adjust the pot. Uh, so I'm gonna grab uh, one end of an IEC cable and off we go. So I've now got uh, mains cable plugged in and being very ginger, I can just lift up the power supply and show you the green LED indicator. Uh, it's on. I'm going to grab in, move that piece of solder. Uh, I'm going to pull in to frame my um, voltmeter. And I'm going to put it on to DC volts. 
uh, the 20 volt range. And what I'm going to do first is measure the two pins at the end um, as to what the volts currently are. So this one over this side is positive, that, that side is negative. So actually we're already only at 13.1 volts. That's not bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my little screwdriver and to lift up the insulation. Um, can I show you this easier? Uh, possibly by just putting it onto its side. There we go. Put it this way. Okay, and so I'm going to just adjust that leftwards a little bit and let's see what difference, if any, that's made to the uh, output. So I can go to the bottom. So that's made some difference, 13.3 volts. So we're going to uh, turn it up a little bit more. 13.5. So we're nearly there. Now, if I had a set of crocodile clips, I would absolutely be um, croc -clip clipping these on. There we go, 13.83. I am happy with that. Uh, yeah, if I had a set of croc clips, I'd croc on my croc clip on my probes, and that way I leave it. Um, I am now going to unplug the power supply. He says. Come on, give me my give me my mains cable back. There we go. The power supply has turned off, so we are now safe to proceed. Obviously, there's still a lot of capacitors in here that are going to be charged, so I don't want to go delving in too deep. But all I'm going to do is put the cover back on. So there we have it. This power supply modified now producing 13.8 anabit volts. Uh, it's not going to be 62 and a half amps anymore. It's going to be more like 55 odd amps. You could do the maths. I'm not going to. Um, if you don't have to have a server that you can rip one of these out of, don't fear, you can pick these power supplies up from eBay for around 10 to 15 pounds. Um, and that's a kind of refurbished price. Brand new, they're gonna be a little bit more than that. I think I saw one at about 40 odd pounds, brand new. Still, that's cheaper than the average amateur radio supply. But no need to do that. Pick up a refurbished one or a used one. It'll work absolutely fine. There's not a lot that actually goes wrong with these. The last thing to consider, and it's something that I've yet to address on this power supply, is how to take the power off these rails. Um, on the one I experimented with before making the video, I drilled a couple of holes and put some hardware in with a nut and a bolt and a couple of washers. And that does work. It, it is producing power. It's powering a radio. It's just not the most elegant of solutions and I'm not particularly happy with it. So what I think I'm going to do for this one is just to grab a length of a twin DC cable at quite a high current rating, maybe sort of 45 amp rated cable, pop a couple of power poles on the end of it and then just hard solder it onto here and then cover the whole thing with some insulating liquid tape. I think that's going to be the best method. Uh, another thought I had, and please run away with this if you want to, would be to mount this power supply in a larger box and then mount some proper terminals to that outer box along with a, an IEC socket and a switch and uh, then just have that short patch cable into the actual power supply inside that box with the sort of vents holes as well. I don't know, there are endless possibilities here and I'm going to leave it up to you as to how you do that. But certainly if you want a cheap power supply, you don't mind opening it up and tweaking the voltage uh, and taking out that little uh, uh, resistor, then go for it. It's a, it's a really, really simple thing to do and I highly recommend you do if you need a power supply for your shack and don't want to spend the earth. Well, there we have it. Thanks very much for watching. There's another video coming up just here. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please do click that subscribe button and also that like button if you did like this. And comment below, have you done this with a server power supply? Uh, is this what's powering your shack? Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. 73.